In this video, we're going to be putting the farmer's market tutorial onto an Android phone. So right away, you need to have uh, watched this video that I have up on my screen right now. If you haven't already deployed anything to Android before, this is basically showing you how to deploy like a Hello World application. And so I'm assuming you've kind of worked through this video. You know how to use Buildozer and a virtual machine on your Windows um, computer. And now we're actually going to make it work with our sort of more complicated app. Okay, so the first thing to do open up VirtualBox and open up the virtual machine that you're using um, to work with Buildozer. Okay, sign in. Okay, we're inside of our virtual machine. We want to go ahead and open up Terminal. And now we want to get the code for our Farmer's Market tutorial onto this virtual machine. So I'm going to clone it from my repository. Git clone https slash slash github.com slash dirk dash sandberg slash farmers market finder tutorial dot git okay now if i just do an ls you will see that i've got this um, farmers market finder tutorial and so i'll cd into there i'll do an ls again you can see we've got the four parts up to this point in the video i'm going to cd to part four because this is all the code so far. And now, like I said, I'm assuming you've already sort of installed everything you need for Buildozer to work. Um, so we're going to just do Buildozer init and basically create an empty Buildozer project for um, this Farmer's Market Finder app. And we need to open up the buildozer.spec file. So I'm going to just move over to it in my file manager. Let's see here. Part four, buildozer.spec. Okay, I'm gonna open this guy and I'll just change the name to like farmers market finder. Note that you can't put an apostrophe in here. So like if I put farmers market like that to be totally punctually correct, um, it's gonna cause an issue. Okay, so no apostrophes in the name. And the only other thing I wanna change right now is actually I'm gonna search for it, the log cat filter. Okay, so uncomment this guy because actually in that the last video I was referencing, um, I didn't use the logcat command, but this time we, we definitely will. Okay, I'm gonna close this. Now you probably you might be thinking, Eric, you need to change like a lot of these um, options in here for everything to work right away. And I understand that, but I'm gonna go through every single error that I get and show you how to fix it. So really you guys should have a good feel of when you see an error happen, when you're trying to deploy something, you'll be able to understand, okay, I know what to do. Um, I need to open up the buildozer.spec file and change you know, this one thing, okay? So we're gonna minimize this and let's just run buildozer android debug deploy run logcat. Okay, and since this is the first time you're doing this, um, it's gonna take like half an hour while it builds everything you need for this buildozer um, app okay so check back in a second okay so some time has passed and it's tried to put the app on our phone and looking at my phone there's nothing here no app is showing up um, and we can see from the output now that we we've used the logcat command that uh, in the line we just ran we can see here okay Python for Android ended OS error file whatever whatever dot ttf not found okay so if you watch the previous video you'll remember that in the buildozer.spec file we need to include the file types of any file that our app relies upon okay so i'm going to do Control c to get rid of this and i'm going back to my text editor in buildozer.spec and let's see right up here so towards the top source.include extension this is where you put any file type that your app needs to run. So you saw that we just had an error for a .ttf file. So I'll do comma .ttf. And I'll save this and we'll run again. So at this point in the video, I'm just gonna run the same command, build those our Android debug deploy run logcat over and over. And every time I had an error, which will be quite a few at the start, I'm gonna show you what the error is and how to fix it. Okay, we've got a new error now. Python for Android ended key error kivi.garden.mapview. 
This one's a little bit more unique. Um, anytime you use a Kivi garden module, so we use the map view one here, there's a special place that you need to say that you're using that in the buildloser.spec file. Okay, so I'll go back to buildloser.spec and I'll look for garden. And here we go, this line here, garden requirements as a list. So all we need to write here is, well, after we've uncommented the line, just write, oops, map view. And that's it, okay? So I'll save again. We'll go back and run one more time. All right, now we've got a new error. It says uh, no module name requests. Now this again is something we can fix in Buildozer. Basically it says the app that we compiled on the phone doesn't have the request module. And we're using the request module um, in part of our app, okay? So we need to go over to buildloser.spec and scroll up. Let's see here. This line, find the requirements line. This is the application requirements. Python 3 and Kivi are in there by default. And here I just got an error that I need requests. Okay, so I'll put in request and now that will be um, compiled with my app. So I'll go back, control C, and I'll run again. <clears throat> and if you watch really closely here, while we're almost at the end of the um, step here to compile the app, you'll see the same error that happened last time. So don't get confused because logcat basically spits out what happened the last time. So there you go, see right there, no module name requests, and it just flew by. So if you're working on your app and you keep seeing the same error over and over, it's probably just the same output from logcat from the last time you ran it, okay? So that scrolled by, no module name request, that's the one we just fixed. Now we've got a new error, um, SQLite 3 operational error, no such table markets. This one might be a little bit hard to debug, but actually what's happening here is we have a file that we rely upon in our app that ends in .db, it's our database file, and because it wasn't included by default, because of this line up here again, remember, we're not including DB files, what it's trying to do is it's searched for a table named markets inside of our DB file that doesn't exist, um, so it's basically like, I can't find the markets table. So what this error is telling you really is no database file. So we'll just go back to here, throw in another comma and type DB because we need our database file. And I will control C and run again. Okay, so this time it looks like our app actually started up and it's working. You can see we've got a couple bugs here um, that we didn't notice before, like the, um, the keyboard has popped up immediately, but that's okay, we'll fix it later. Now, it looks like it's working, but we'll try the search feature right now, and this is the only part that accesses like internet functionality. So I'll try to type something in here like, take me to Carolina, okay? And when I hit search here, oops, the app crashes. So you might not see all the errors right away when your app starts up, but um, make sure to test everything out and you'll see more errors. Okay, so what was the actual error? Well, let's see, um, no such file or directory, app id.txt. Okay, what's going on here? This one actually uh, is an error straight from me. Remember in one of our earlier videos, I said that I was going to hide my credentials for the here um, geocoding service. That's um, how I did it pretty much. I put it inside this app id.txt file and also a file called app code.txt. And then I did not put those in Git. So when you clone the Git repository or like I did at the start of this video, you will not have this app ID and the app code.txt files um, unless you've like forked and added them to your own repository, something like that. So I'm going to go download those files um, throughout a, through a different method and I'll come back and remember that txt files are not by default included here. So we kind of are killing two birds with one stone by including the txt files and making sure you have your app ID and app code um, somewhere inside your app. Okay, so I've done an ls now, and you can see I have my app code.txt and app id.txt, and again, I've got txt included now, txt files included, so I will run one more time. Let's see, build those Android debug deploy run logcat. Okay, and we'll try one more time to search by address. I'll put in Carolina here, and we'll search. And we've got another error. So we can see error here, and then no address associated with host name. 
This is actually coming from the URL request that I wrote um, when I was writing the app. And if the URL request fails or uh, gets an error, it prints out the word. So this actually is me printing out the word error, and then it prints out the error that it got. So it says no address associated with host name. What this means basically in this context is our app does not have permissions to access the internet. Now, when you're using Buildozer and Android, you have something in the spec file called Android permissions. By default, it's commented out. You're going to want to uncomment it. And you can see Android.permissions internet. This is the one we need right now. And we'll later put in some more um, permissions to access the GPS. But right now, we just need this internet one to fix this error. So our URL request failed to go talk to our here geocoding service because we didn't have internet permission on our app. So I'll control C, run again. Okay, I'll go to the search menu, Carolina, search, and, oops, we got another error. <laughs> okay, this time it says SSL certificate verify failed. Now, when this happens in your app, this is an issue um, when using like Python 3 on mobile. I've found it for both iOS and Android. Um, we need to go and fix some code. Basically, when you are communicating over HTTPS, which we are to the here geocoding service, um, you need to have uh, an SSL certificate, which is basically part of the security process um, in the HTTPS protocol. Um, right now, it can't find where your certificate is, so you need to go change the URL request line that we wrote in Python to specify explicitly where this uh, certificate file is. Okay, so I'll cut to that really quick. Okay, so a quick interlude. Uh, we need to write a little bit of code. Uh, remember, our error was that we couldn't find our certificate file. So this is the URL request that I'm talking about where uh, we're making that call over HTTPS. Here's the HTTPS uh, URL. And on mobile, it doesn't know where the certificate file is. So we can add a parameter here in our URL request line. And the parameter is CA file. You'll see it autocomplete, so it knows. And this is certify.where. Certify is a new module that I need to import. And I can just say um, import certify. OK, that's good. Now our um, URL request should work on mobile. And the other thing I want to do is I want to fix the color of my app. So to do that, I'm just going to change um, the primary palette of the theme manager. So I'll say self.themecls.primarypalette equals blue gray. This will make it so that the, like the top bar actually matches the color of, um, of our markers, which I didn't, I didn't actually do in one of the previous videos. And the last thing I want to do is fix the issue of the keyboard opening when the app starts, OK? And what that actually is from is my search pop-up menu here that inherits from MD input dialog. And the issue is, if I go look at the source code for MD input dialog, um, we can see here that in MD input dialog, when it's initialized, it calls um, basically after half a second, set field focus. And the set field focus function basically um, sets the, it's like you tapped on the text field inside of this widget. So even though we can't see it, um, I haven't opened it in the app. Since I initialize it in the main, uh, like when the app starts right here, since it's initialized, it calls this set field focus function, and that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to get rid of this guy. Actually, I'll cut him out. So I'll cut that, and now in search pop-up menu, I'll say def open. And now this is overriding the, the natural open function of, um, of like a modal view, which the MD input dialog inherits from. So when this opens now, I'll say highlight the text field. So before it was when it was initialized, but really I want it to happen when it's open. So I just need to from kibi.clock import clock here. Okay. And now also I just need to do super.open. So it's going to open and then set the field focus after half a second. Okay, that should fix all of our problems. I'm going to push this. And actually, this is going straight to part four, so I kind of maybe should have planned this out a little bit better ahead of things. But either way, 
I'll push this to GitHub. And since this is pushed to GitHub, you guys probably won't have to worry about this because this will be fixed when you clone it, when you're following along with this video. Um, but for me, I'm going to go need to update my uh, repository on the Linux machine. Okay, so this push was successful. I'm gonna move back to uh, my Windows machine. Okay, now we're back on my Windows machine. I need to update my uh, repository here that I've cloned because uh, as you just saw, I changed the color of the main app and I fixed that um, error with the CA file not being found, the SSL certificate verify failed error, and um, I also fixed the issue where the keyboard popped up right away. Okay, so let me go ahead and git pull origin master. Okay, you can see what just changed was I removed the line that um, basically highlighted the text field or opened up the keyboard um, immediately when the dialog or when our search menu was instantiated. I put in a line and that was the color change. And then here I changed it so that um, when the search pop-up menu is opened, it sets the uh, it opens up the keyboard. Okay, so now that we finished this, oh, and that fixed the the CA file error. I'll run Billows or Android debug deploy run logcat. Oh, whoops, of course I got an error. No module name certify. So true to my word, I'm showing you every single error that you're going to find while doing this yourself. Hopefully at least. Um, okay, requirements. We have to add certify because that module is not found. And control C and run again. Okay, the app is opened up and you can see it looks a lot better. The keyboard doesn't pop up, and now we're going to do our last check here, which is try to zoom over to Carolina, wherever that's going to take us, hopefully North Carolina. And you can see the app has changed. Oh, we are definitely not in North Carolina. <laughs> um, the map changed. So our URL request worked now that we specified the CA file, and our app looks pretty nice. I can zoom around. I can zoom in. Click on markers, you'll see all of this info pops up. And if I click on their website, like that, you can see it opens up the native browser to go straight to their website. Um, unfortunately, their website is incorrect in the database or something, it just doesn't exist. Uh, but yeah, so you can see that our app works. Everything about it looks pretty good. I'm happy with. Uh, the outcome and in the next video because this one's kind of gone on a little bit too long So I need to break them up. We will get GPS working on Android Okay, so we'll create a marker on the map that's specific to your phone's location and it will follow you around um, And then we'll add some Android permissions to access GPS and that should be basically the entire app Okay, so thank you guys for watching and see you next time